Who were you talking to, Noah? Fancy, why were you hiding in the shadows? I mean, were you eavesdropping on me? I was worried, so I came looking for you, and I overheard you talking to a woman. Who was she, Noah? I'm here in Harmony to see you. The last few years have been empty without you. I'm here because I still love you. You gotta be kidding. I want you back. Please give me another chance. Give us another chance. I'll die if you don't. Why won't you answer me? Who are you with just now? So, Alistair Crane is still out of it? As far as I know. He should be dead, Paloma. I mean, he was stabbed, and then he had a heart attack, and then a stroke. I don't know how he's still kicking. Mm. They say that evil people are the hardest to kill. I wish I'd been at the mansion to see all the fireworks. No, you don't. It was a horrible New Year's Eve for everyone. Yeah, you told me Jessica was up there with that creep Spike. <sighs> yeah. She was drugged out of her mind, and he tied her to a bed and held a knife on her. It was awful. But her father found her and saved her, right? Let's just hope that she's done with Spike for good. Oh, so have you guys seen Jessica? N no, Mr. Bennett, she hasn't come in here. Why, is she missing again? Yeah. I believe she's gone back to Spike. Oh, any luck? No, not yet, Mother. I keep thinking any minute now I'll find something that'll tell me where Father's hiding Beth and Marty. Well, I know you won't quit until you do. I'm just glad that you have someone to help you. Chris has been wonderful. He seems like a very wonderful young man, and it's obvious that he's very much in love with you. Hmm. Well, he said that he's determined not to give up until Marty's back in my arms. Well, oh, Mother, it's been so long. I'm so afraid that I won't know Marty when I see him. Oh, once you see your little boy, your heart will know him right away. Don't worry about that. Every day that goes by, I'm more afraid that I won't get Marty back. You aren't, you aren't giving up, are you? No. I'll never stop loving him. I'll never stop looking for him. Sheridan, there's something that I want to talk with you about. Something I need to tell you. What is it? Is it bad news? It's not for me, but it might be for someone else. Who? Pilar. Sheridan, I still love Mart so much. I want him back. By the way, I spoke to Father Lonigan, and he said the date is available for the ceremony. Martin, I want to renew our vows on our wedding anniversary. I think that's a great idea. It's a magical date for me, one that I always celebrated, even all the years that you were gone. I love you very much, Pilar. I love you too, Martin, very much. Are you happy that we're renewing our vows? I can't think of anything that would make me happier. You want some coffee? Please. Oh. Get out of my house or I'll call the police. I'm going to fight for the man I love, do you understand? And I'm going to fight for the man that loves me. So you get ready. Look what I have. Uh, <laughs> thank you. you. Yeah. Do you know what, sweetie? Let's not wait. Uh, let's call Father on again. Let's renew our vows tonight. It's time for you to die, old man. 
Even if you hadn't tortured all those people, the way you've treated your daughter, is reason enough. You've broken Sheridan's heart. You've done everything to ruin her life. You've even reached out to try and threaten me. And I can't have that. So it's time for you to go. Chris, what are you doing? Rachel, what are you doing here? I'm here for the same reason you are. I want Alistair dead. Are you saying you came here to kill Alistair? I wish. I want him dead, like most of the people in this town do. But now is not the time. And you can't kill him either, Chris. Why not? Because you would be sacrificing your life. You and Sheridan have a future together, and I don't want to see you lose that. Sheridan doesn't deserve to lose another love. Sharon can't afford to lose another person in life. Do you think you can hear us? Alistair, if you can hear us, it's okay to let go. It's time. Go to the light, Alistair. Go to the light. Except in his case, the light is probably the flames of hell. Bastard. Why can't you just die? Well, as long as he stays this way, he can't hurt anybody else. I come in here sometimes just to make sure. You truly hate him, don't you? I never knew I had this much venom for another. I started to say another human being, but he's not human. Rachel, how did you ever become involved with him? Weren't you supposed to marry him? Yes. I was very young and very innocent. And in the beginning, he was wonderful. He was rich and powerful, <laughs> even charming. His generosity was amazing. He was so romantic. It just made my head spin. What happened? Why didn't you marry him? I woke up. I was living in a fantasy, a romantic dream. And it finally turned into a horrendous nightmare. How could Jessica go back to Spike after what he did to her? It's got to be the drugs. Well, that's the only explanation. I thought what he did to her up the mansion would be enough to turn Jessica against Spike forever. Not if he's controlling her mind with drugs. I just wish people could see the damage drugs do. Again. Do you have any idea where he could have taken Jessica? It can be anywhere. He's got a sleazy apartment, but he lives mostly on the streets and in those seedy motels. Yeah, the seedy motels where he forces Jessica to prostitute herself. I'd like to kill that guy. I almost beat him to death up at the mansion. Look, I have to find Jessica and get her away from him for good. I'm with you. Because if Jessica's with Spike, she's in danger. Yes, and there's a killer on the loose. And I'm not talking about the one who tried to kill Alistair. I'm talking about the one you know, where all those Johns turned up dead? Mama, help me. I, I don't want to go to jail. I'm a serial murderer. They'll give me the chair. Simone, do you know something? No. Simone, if you know something, OK, that could help me find Jessica, please, you have to tell me. Please. I know I heard a woman's voice, Noah. Who are you talking to? One of the waitresses. Um, a customer was mouthing off to her, and, and she defended herself, and now she thinks she's going to lose her job. Oh. Noah to the rescue, as usual. <laughs> you just can't help being a knight in shining armor, can you? <laughs> Don't ever change. I love you for being such a hero. <laughs> oh, so, so how are you doing? I mean, how's your grandfather? Um, 
His condition hasn't changed. I sat with him for a long time, and it was heartbreaking. After you, maybe. Don't start. OK, all right. I'm sorry, Fancy. Okay, I know how hard this is for you. Well, I know you don't care whether he lives or dies, but thanks. I left him because I was worried about you. Me? Why? I still think someone was watching us at the ice rink, and I just suddenly had this feeling you were in danger. <sighs> Look, I'm not in any danger, Fancy. <sighs> I hope not. I don't know what I would do if I lost you. Hey, look, you're not gonna lose me, okay? You sure you're not gonna run off with that waitress? <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna run off with any waitress, Fancy. I'm gonna run off with you. <laughs> it's my house. Oh. Right now. <laughs> where we can get warm and cozy. And I can show you just how wrong you really are. Show me. How? Oh, do you want me to tell you now, or do you want to be surprised? Mm, I think surprise me. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. Wait, let, let's renew our vows tonight, wait, wait, please. Wait, 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 just take it easy, honey. Now, all you've talked about is having this beautiful ceremony with all our family and friends. Why do you want to rush it? I, I don't know. I, Martin, when you disappeared, I had no warning. We were together, and then you left me for a few minutes, and then I never saw you again for over 20 years. I don't want that to happen again. I don't want to lose you. Honey, you're not going to lose me. I'm here. You can count on that. You can count on me. And I can count on Catherine doing everything she can to take you away from me. Mother, what made you decide to do this? I thought you wanted Martin to go back with Pilar to be a family with her again. I thought I did. <sighs> you don't hate me for changing my mind. Oh, I could never hate you. But why did you change your mind? You know, my decision to give Martin up was completely based on Alistair's threats. Alistair threatened me because of my relationship with you, that that would drive a wedge between you and Louise, who blamed me for taking Martin away from Pilar. Yeah, he had a hard time forgiving. I know. And then Alistair threatened to tell you you were a murderer, that you'd killed my sister. Now Aunt Rachel is alive. And Luis is gone, so... There are no more threats hanging over my head. And I had a very interesting talk with Rachel. And she convinced you to get Martin back into your life? No. She helped me understand something very important, that I had a right to happiness, just like Pilar. Of course you deserve to be happy. I do. But I told Pilar. You told her? Yes, I made it very clear to her that I was going to fight for my happiness and that having Martin back is my happiness. What did she say? Well, she was furious, of course, and, and frightened. Because I think she knows that Martin still loves me. Why is Martin planning on renewing his vows with Pilar if he's still in love with you? Martin's a very honorable man. I think he feels very badly about abandoning Pilar all those years ago, and I was the one who told him to go back to her. But I had no choice. At least I didn't feel I had. With Alistair's threats, I really didn't. But now, I... It sounds like you've made up your mind. Why tell me? Oh, Sheridan, but of course I want to tell you, darling. I... I know that Pilar has been like a mother to you and that you have a very special fondness for her. Mother, it's more than just a fondness. I... I love Pilar. I mean, she was the only one there for me when I was a child. That's exactly why I'm telling you, Sheridan. You're my daughter. I don't want to do anything to ruin our relationship. Can you accept my fighting to get Martin back? Rachel, I haven't known you for very long, but I, I find it hard to believe that you even considered marrying a monster like Alistair. How did that happen? I was young and somewhat naive. It took me a long time to realize 
who Alistair really was. The fact is, I felt sorry for him. He was so needy, as though he had been deprived of love as a child. So when I showed him any kind of kindness or affection, he became obsessed with me. And that didn't put up a red flag? No. At that age, most girls are thrilled when someone shows that intense devotion. So when did you realize he was a monster? Alistair, what's key? I was so stunned by what I saw. I almost fainted. I'm so sorry, Rachel. That must be a terrible thing for you to have seen. It was beyond painful. After I'd gone downstairs to tell everyone that the party was canceled because Alistair was ill, I went back upstairs, and then I changed my clothes, and then... Come in. I sent everyone home, and now I'm leaving. Leaving? Go where? Anywhere away from you. I'm not gonna marry you, Alistair. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, of course you are. Don't you be ridiculous. What's come over you? I don't even know who you are. And I obviously cannot live the kind of life that you want me to. You will never be allowed to leave me. Never! The next thing I knew, Alistair's goons were there, locking me up. Welcome to your new home! when I realized that Alistair intended to keep me hidden away, a prisoner for the rest of my life. No one would come looking for you because they all thought you were dead. That's right. No one even knew the cabin existed at the time. And I was in a room that was well hidden. Alistair brought me newspapers that told me of how devastated my family was about my death. And eventually I came to realize that I would never escape that place. But then something happened that changed all that. I knew I had to escape or die trying. Okay, all right. If you don't want to do it tonight, then what about next week? It just takes yeah, me a few uh, days uh, to Clark, organize it. You have it. to stop worrying that something's going to happen to stop us. Now, what is it, Alistair? I mean, are you worried that he'll recover from his stroke and do something to hurt us? Well, it's possible. I... He's not dead yet, and you know Alistair. No, according to the doctors, that's not likely to happen anytime soon, if ever. Now, come on. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. I hope so. Oh, God, it's just that I've had so much taken from me in the past. You left, and then Antonio left, only to come back to be killed by Alistair. And Luis leaves to go find Marty, and Alistair had him murdered. And now our beautiful daughter's married to that monster and he adopted little Ethan. I know, you've had terrible losses. But you're not gonna lose me again. Good, because I don't think I could stand having you taken from me again. Pilar, what's really going on? Is there some reason that you think I'm going to be taken away from you? So, Sheridan, would you Support me in fighting for Martin. It would really hurt me to see Pilar in pain. I completely understand. So are you saying that you'll be taking Pilar's side in this? If you have any information that would help me find Jessica, you have to tell me. Honestly, I don't, Chief Bennett. I promise. I, I, I was just thinking about all the horrible things that happened New Year's Eve at the Crane Mansion. Uh huh. It was a terrible night for everyone. Okay. Well, I better get out there and try to find her. <laughs> if you guys hear of anything, you'll call me, right? Oh, absolutely. On my cell phone. Yeah, we'll call you. Mm -hmm. 
I feel terrible for him. So do I. But I feel worse for Jessica if she is back with Spike. What do you think Mr. Benner would do if he knew Jessica could be the one killing those chants? I don't know. But I hope he wouldn't hate her like my dad hates me for being gay. Simone, he doesn't hate you. He just doesn't know any better. Give him time. I don't know if that'll do any good. But there's nothing I can do about that now, is there? Nope. Nada. So, you seem to be settling into your new job pretty well. You like it? Mm, it's a job. You know, I like talking to the customers and promise you won't tell my mom. I like cleaning. Maybe it's genetic. My mom is a fanatic when it comes to a clean kitchen. And when I see this place spotless, I, I feel like I've accomplished something. <laughs> well, um, listen, I have to go down to the basement to get more coffee filters. Um, will you come with me? It's um, kind of creepy. Why are there rats in the basement? I, I hadn't thought about the rats. Thank you very much. Now I'm really creeped out. Okay, I'll go with you. Bet you didn't think I'd have a stash of this lying around, did you? No, I thought you might have a couple beers, but this well, is amazing. It's left over from New Year's. You know, I kept thinking that we'd get back here, but... Uh... But we're here now, and I'm loving it. <laughs> May I propose a toast? Mm -hmm. How about... To us. Oh, yes, to us. Oh, next surprise. Oh, you're a magician. <laughs> Strawberries and cream, my favorite thing to have with champagne. Yes, I know. A good Boy Scout pays attention. Let's see here. <clears throat> How about this one? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good, no? Mm. Are you trying to earn a merit badge? Am I getting one? Maybe. <laughs> Sheridan, I know that I don't really deserve your love. I left you when you were just a child. I ran away and let you believe I was dead. But I love you with all my heart. If you choose not to support me, I will understand. I think you had no choice but to leave me. I can't even imagine the horror that you had to live with as my father's wife. But if this is what you feel you need to do, can I be neutral? Can I just not take your side or Pilar's side because you both deserve happiness. And if being with Martin is what makes you happy, then I suppose you have to go for it. Oh, oh Sheridan. Thank you. Martin will make his own decision whether he stays with Pilar or leaves her. I just, I feel bad for Pilar. I mean, she's lived with the dream of having her husband back for so many years. I feel badly for her, too. But you know, she was free in those years to... F to find someone else, to... to find someone else to love. There was a time where I would have told you that was impossible for any woman. When I lost Luis, I thought I would never find love again. But I have, with Chris. The heart has this enormous capacity for love. Love for our children, for our families, romantic love, love of a man. Sometimes more than one man can touch our heart. I want you to be happy, Mother. Thank you. And 
Please tell me if you find out anything new about Marty, about where he might be. I will. I love you. I love you. I hope you get what you want, Mother. Will I? You said that something happened that motivated you to escape? Yes. Alistair had delivered a newspaper to me announcing his marriage to Catherine. I became enraged. I was pounding on the door. I tried to kill myself with a plastic knife that they brought with my meals. But my jailer was there in a heartbeat to bandage me up, to let me know that it was pointless for me to try to escape. I don't know, I became numb. I just gave up. I knew that there was no way that I could escape. I wanted to die, but he just kept me prisoner for years. And no one tried to help you? Most of the time, the only person I saw was Otto. Now, Otto's the guy that Sheridan thinks is helping keep Beth and Marty hidden. Yes. Otto was blindly devoted to Alistair. But there was another person, a cleaning woman. Sometimes Otto would let her clean my room without supervision. And she let me know that Catherine was suffering from Alistair's brutality. I was so enraged. I wanted to help Catherine. So I begged, I begged the cleaning woman to help me. And finally she did. She gave something to Otto to make him sleep. And then she left my door unlocked and I was able to run away. Good God. What ever happened to her, the cleaning woman? She was found dead soon after that. They said it was a heart attack. <sighs> Alistair had her killed. I know he did, but I can't prove it. So what happened to you after you escaped? I went to the mansion and confronted Alistair. I had a knife. I was going to kill him. But then Sheridan, who was just a little girl at the time, she came in and she didn't know me, but she just knew that I was gonna hurt her father. So she grabbed a letter opener and she attacked me. She just wounded me a little bit, but Alistair was able to convince her that she had actually killed me, only he made her believe that she had killed Catherine, her real mother. So up until the time that Catherine reappeared, Sheridan actually believed that she'd killed her own mother? Yes, and once that lie was exposed, he had to come up with another one, so he made her believe that she had killed me. Well, how did he handle you that night? Well, after Sheridan attacked me and he had the servants take her away, he had me drugged. When I woke up, I was in some prison by a sea. I never was sure where I was, really. Chris, that, that reminds me of something important. I might know something about where Marty's being held. Well, what is it? Every time Alistair would come to me to taunt me, to drive me crazy, I would scream at him about how much I hated him. He would always smile and he would say the word, Kamakeke. Kamakeke? Yes, Kamakeke. That's the key, the word. I've got to get to Sheridan. But what does it mean? Just get me to Sheridan. Okay. Right, it is creepy down here. This? I told you. I'll just get the filters and we'll go. It's even creepier because the book cafe is owned by Alistair Crane. He stole it from Beth Wallace when she made it successful. What evil thing hasn't Alistair done? <clears throat> Simone, do you think it's the same person? That the one killing the Johns also tried to kill Alistair? You mean Jessica? I was just thinking. Well, I don't know, Paloma. I mean, she certainly has as much reason as anybody who was there. She, Alistair, ruined her father's career, and Spike is connected to Alistair, so, you know. Oh, oh, oh are you okay? See, see, see. I think there's a loose board down here. Let me mark it so it can be fixed. Wait a minute. Is there a reason that you think something's going to happen to take you away from me again? If it's not Alistair, then what? Or who? No, no one. No one. I'm sorry. 
I'm just being paranoid. I will try to be more positive, okay? Yeah, please, try not to worry. I mean, we're gonna have a wonderful ceremony with no hitches, all right? It is going to be a beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it will. <sighs> hey, I have an idea. Why don't you go try on your wedding dress? You've been talking about seeing if it still fits, so go on, give it a try. Well, I don't know. After five babies, I doubt you it, Martin. You are as beautiful today as you were the day we were married, and I can't wait to see you in it. I'll be waiting right here. What's wrong? I have to talk to you, Martin. I have to ask you something. Something very important. I wonder what's gonna happen to Mother now that Pilar knows that she's going after Martin. And what's Martin going to say? I wish I understood my father's evil. He knew the worst thing he could do to me would be to take Marty away. Sheridan! Rachel just remembered something that might be a clue to finding Marty. So, is this where you brought all your conquests in high school? Fancy. I went away to boarding school my junior year. Before that? Before that, I was just a kid. Uh-huh. That's not what your friend Edmund said. He said you were already a player by freshman year of high school. Yeah, Edmund never learned to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> you know, I was slightly advanced for my age, I think. I've seen the way girls throw themselves at you, Noah. I know how I feel about you, so there must have been plenty of girls in your life. Well, I'm not saying that there weren't. So, let me ask you a question, point blank. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten all your ex-girlfriends out of your system? your question? I know. I love you, Fancy. Only you. It's a trap door. Someone went to a lot of trouble to keep this secret. Alistair Crane! Should we call the police? No, they all work for Alistair now. Maybe we should call Chief Bennett. No, he's out looking for Jessica. Let's go down and, and take a look. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't know about this. Oh, come on, Simone. I'm the one who's scared, remember? <gasps> Paloma, don't go down there. What? There's another room down here. Come on! of Alistair Crane. What is this place? What is it, Aunt Rachel? What have you remembered? I was telling Chris that when I was held hostage, I would tell Alistair all the time how much I hated him. And he would tell me that he could send me anywhere in the world, but I would never be out of his reach. And he would always say, Kamakeke. Kamakeke, what does that mean? I don't know, but it could be a place. It might be the place where Alistair's hidden Beth and Marty. Father loves intrigue, so it could lead us to something. Oh, Chris, this could be it. We're getting closer to Marty. I can feel it. Please let there be a match for this coming KK and let it lead me to my son. I'm a... What's in there? Files, documents, CDs, computer disks. 
These are all Alistair's. What's it doing down here? And why would Alistair hide stuff in a room nobody's ever seen before? These are his secret files. Alistair personal secrets locked away. Simon, we have discovered a gold mine. Now, Catherine, I know that look. You're upset. What is it? I don't want you to renew your vows with Pilar. What? Please don't go through with it. I love you, Martin. I want you back. I want you to be married to me, not Pilar. I can't believe it actually still fits. Hmm. Wait till Martin sees me in it. I can't believe it's going to happen. We are going to renew our vows and be together finally. Forever. Okay, King. The Crane database must be huge. It is. But if there's a person or a place with such a name, it'll be in here somewhere. It's found something. What is that? What's that number? Wait a minute. I think that's a coordinate. I think that number's a key to a location. You're right. And it's got to do with a place called Kamakeke. Which is where Marty is. It's gotta be. We're gonna find my son. You wouldn't have said her name when you were making love to me if she didn't still mean a lot to you. Please don't make me do this to him. India? No, you are not leaving. I will not let you. 